Welcome to another cloud analysis video. If you haven't watched the first one about small clouds, please go ahead, the link is down below. In this video we want to talk about flying under large clouds and we want to try to read them and develop strategies to fly safely close to them or avoid them altogether. So let's jump straight into it. Ahead you can see quite a big cloud. I would say the width of this cloud is more than one kilometer. And immediately when you have such a big cloud, you need to ask yourself, is it safe to fly underneath one of those? And as a first rule of thumb, I would say you should look at the ratio between the width and the height of the cloud. And I would say roughly if the cloud is two to three times taller than it is wide, there begins the danger zone. So if we look at this cloud here, which is really quite wide, if that would have two to three times the height of the width, that would already be quite scary. So I would definitely not fly underneath this. And uh, one other thing to consider is how is the cloud developing? So is it just growing in height uncontrollably? Or is there something that stops it from growing vertically? And as you can see here, this cloud is actually um, quite large, but it grows not towards the top. So there is something like an inversion or much drier air higher up that really stops the growth of this cloud. So overall, I would say this cloud is kind of borderline, but still safe to fly underneath. What I also do with big clouds, I always think about an exit strategy. So what I mean by this is when I fly underneath the cloud that I have a strategy which way I would head in order to escape the cloud suck and escape the cloud. And that usually involves that you can fly cross or downwind and don't have to fly against the wind because if your exit strategy is to fly against the wind then it can be very tough to actually exit. So if you go into the time lapse you can see a special feature of this cloud is that there is some condensation underneath the cloud base. So look at these dark wisps that form underneath the cloud base. They're really well visible. So if we go a bit back and forth so you can see it better, you can really see how there is quite a bit of condensation underneath the cloud base. And this is very typical for large clouds that exert some cloud suck as this one here. And in order to explain this phenomenon, I will jump a little bit into theory. Don't get intimidated, it's actually quite easy. So as the air rises and condenses up at cloud base, it releases energy due to the condensation process. And this warms up the air, hence this air can rise again. And therefore the cloud starts to suck in more air from the surrounding. And this is the key point. So this air that condenses below the cloud base comes not from the slopes below as the thermal air is, but comes from the surroundings of the cloud. And this air has therefore a different temperature and a different moisture content and hence it can start to condense earlier than the air that was in the thermal. I hope this was more or less clear. So you, you can watch this phenomenon again in the hyperlapse. You can really see how it condenses beneath the cloud base. Again, this is very typical of um, clouds that exert some cloud suck because they have this extra energy from the condensation, which means that they can pull in more air from the surrounding. So this is a good indication of um, cloud suck. And if you observe this, you should be very careful. And again, if we go back and forth, you can see um, that I fly to the edge of this kind of cloud suck region. So I could always escape towards the left. This is a very, very important point. So always have an exit strategy when you fly towards these big clouds. 
and when you see condensation underneath base you also know that um, this cloud exerts at least some cloud suck. With this I just want to add one more piece of information so often in order to have this kind of cloud suck phenomenon the air needs to be relatively moist and it cannot be too cold so often in spring when it's really cold you won't see huge overdevelopments and huge clouds that have big cloud suck but in summer when the air is hotter and contains more moisture it is much more common to observe these bigger clouds have thunderstorm and also observe cloud suck so this was pretty much it. You could see um, it's important to assess the cloud, um, look at the ratio of the width towards the height, look at what's happening at the base of the cloud. Is there condensation? Always have a exit strategy for a big cloud. Where would you head when the st cloud starts sucking? And if you observe all of these guidelines, you can safely fly closer towards big clouds. But of course, always be very careful. We only have one life and it's not um, worth it to waste this at all because there is always another flight waiting. If you want to watch this flight further, please look at the link here. Um, it's an awesome flight overall and I hope you learned something and see you next time.